Welcome to Iceland's powerhouse, the ON geothermal power plant at Hellesheider, 20 miles outside Reykjavik. There are plenty of downsides about living with volcanoes, eruptions, earthquakes and lava flows. But this is a definite upside. The world's eighth biggest geothermal power plant heats homes, provides hot water and electricity, all for 10 to 25% of the cost in renewable rich Scotland, for example. So what's the secret in Iceland? That's what this film is all about. Hellesheider is a spooky sight as the steam envelops buildings and swirls around this empty mountain terrain. An outsider might think there could be nothing of value here, but that outsider would be very wrong. I'm here to meet Kari Valgarsson, a geologist and science advisor whose job is to explain the geothermal miracle that heats Iceland. And it seems that a key ingredient in the mix is something that crops up in Fingal's cave and the Giant's Causeway. And it's so precious to Icelanders that Harpa, their stunning new concert hall, models it in glass. Yes, the geothermal story starts with basalt. Uh, basalt is very porous, has a lot of holes in it, so uh, that is really good for geothermal because then water can seep into these permeable bedrock formations. And that is the second thing that we need. We need to have a lot of water. And the third thing that we need is the heat source itself. So the water will seep into these permeable bedrock formations, gets heated up by the heat source, and then forms this high temperature geothermal system. And how do you get from having all that incredibly hot water down below, below to creating heating systems for people in houses. Exactly, yeah. Uh, for example, here at this facility, we are just drilling into the earth. We, we have these, uh, like, uh, for example, with oil wells, uh, we derive this drilling technology from the oil and gas industry. So we drill to an average depth of about two kilometers. Yeah. And uh, here at this facility, at two kilometer depth, we have temperatures at about 300 degrees Celsius. It's fairly hot down there. Uh, and what we get from each individual borehole is what you call the geothermal fluid. Geothermal? Fluid. Fluid. Yeah, exactly. And this geothermal fluid is just water with a lot of dissolved minerals inside of it. Uh, and most abundant mineral in this geothermal fluid is silica. Yeah. So the silica rich fluid. Uh, and uh, because it's under so much pressure where we are drilling into it, uh, it's still in liquid form down there, but then we drill down into it and extract it to the surface of the earth, and therefore we lower the pressure, and then it becomes both steam and geothermal fluid together. Now, here at this facility, we are producing both electricity and hot water for the capital area. But with the blue dots, we are mostly only producing hot water for each individual uh, municipality or something like that. So when you separate the two things, is it the hot water that's going in the pipes to Reykjavik? That is the thing. Uh, because this geothermal fluid is so silica uh, rich, we use a heat exchanging process where we're simply taking out fresh cold groundwater from the nearby vicinity of the power plant, put that into parallel pipes with the geothermal fluid, and we do like a heat exchange. And so this hot groundwater is then sent to the capital. What happens to the old geothermal fluid? Yeah, yeah. Uh, after the heat exchanging process, uh, process we simply re-inject it into the ground to kind of create this renewable energy aspect. Yeah. And people might worry about that level of interference with mm. the earth, yeah. especially here where you've had recent, well, it's an ongoing eruption at mm -hmm. Grindavik. It's not here where you are, mm -hmm. but I think there's a lot of worry about, you know, interference with seismic yeah. Iceland. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, when you are uh, in the process of extracting and re-injecting, especially re-injecting, uh, you could uh, have induced seismicity. However, 
these seismic activities will not have any effect on Mother Earth. Mother Earth is incredible, uh, incredible feat uh, that we uh, do not want to overcome and we cannot overcome because uh, even though uh, we drill into, like for example in the Krabla, we drilled into a, a magma dike uh, and that was not enough to create an eruption. So nothing or like, yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing because, you know, anywhere else you would think, mm, magma, <laughs> I think we'll leave that alone. Mm -hmm. But But you guys are actually drilling right down into the magma now, aren't you, or to that level? Yeah, uh, we are at least trying to uh, do that uh, based off of the Krabla uh, deep drilling project. Uh, that was, uh, they did not intend to do it, but uh, we are currently trying to get like the right metals to uh, drill into magma chambers, yes. But uh, here at this facility, we are not doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And just, you, you yourself are a geologist, mm -hmm. um, it's partly your upbringing and then there was an eruption when you were young and I suppose that really made, it brings you aware of mm -hmm. what the future of this island depends on, yeah. an understanding of geology. Mm -hmm. uh, it may seem a stupid question, but are you scared to live here? No, no, uh, this is just one of the things, I mean, this is why we are located or, or you know, this is why we want to be here. Uh, Volcanoes, for example, some of them uh, produce volcanic gas, and that that is uh, can be a fertilizer for uh, some of the agriculture that we have. But we just have to live with the volcanoes. The volcanoes do not live with us; we live with the volcanoes, and this is what we are essentially doing. We uh, we you know just have to adapt. If something uh, were to happen, we will just have to adapt, and we have uh, things for many many scenarios uh, like for example if uh, in Eyjafjallajökull when that erupted in 2010 uh, we had some uh, like search and rescue teams going out in the field to check out for example with the farm animals uh, with the people that are living there and stuff like that but you know uh, most of the time we were just uh, trying to mitigate um, uh, this volcanic eruption it was not yeah. Are you aware from the kind of questions that people like me ask when we come from countries without volcanicity, without volcanoes, that people find this all quite astonishing? You yeah. know how able you are to live with risk? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, of course. Uh, it's not, uh, I mean, it's not like uh, people have not been living nearby volcanoes. I mean, for example, in, in Italy, for example, the, the city is just. Uh, there's a city uh, nearby an active volcano that is continuously been uh, built up and uh, they are not worried over there or, uh, and I mean we humans for example are just resilient in that way we, if we want to live somewhere we just live there <laughs> <laughs> just to astonish everyone um, how much does your heating cost here? Heating and hot water for your house, your flat? Yeah, uh, I live in uh, a small flat, like 70 square meter apartment, and for electricity and heating, it's about uh, 60 pounds per month. Everything, for even a, in the winter? Yeah, yeah, it might go up to maybe 70 pounds per month, uh, but, uh, but this is also like a small apartment, but uh, still, yeah, uh, electricity and heating is is not that much. I notice being here and staying with friends that their lights are on all the time, yeah. their windows are open, you know, because it's too hot. Yeah. It's like you have so much energy, you hardly know what you're doing. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this is the thing also being here in Iceland, uh, living here, uh, we are not maybe the most energy efficient nation in the world yet. Yeah. It's because we have a lot of energy available to us uh, and this energy is just nearby us so we do know that uh, since we're using it it's just uh, there you know where did the investment money come from did it come from iceland or did it come from other countries yeah uh, it came from uh, iceland in general uh, all power plants and all heating and stuff like that except for one power plant is uh, 
either owned by uh, the government or each municipality. So, uh, so this is mostly nationalized uh, thing that uh, you know it's just paid with our taxes. And we, as Icelanders, at least in my opinion, I think we are very grateful that it is just all nationalized. Because if it were maybe private, prices would potentially go up. Meanwhile, other industries are located in a geothermal park beside the power station, taking advantage of the cheap energy. And uh, we have two companies, or, or three even, uh, operating right now at the facility. We have Vaxa, which is producing algae in like a greenhouse environment. What's that for? Al uh, that much algae? They, they are producing this algae to produce supplements, like for example, uh, vitamin products like vitamin D, omega-3. Uh, and why they are doing it is because by doing it like this, it's more vegan kind of thing. Uh, instead of extracting the omega-3 and vitamin D from the fish, we do it just directly with the algae itself. So we are cutting out the vitamin. But still, the most important product is that hot water. Heavily insulated pipes take it for use in four council areas along the 20-mile route to its main destination, Reykjavik. And that pipeline and others like it find their way, amongst other places, to this remarkable storage facility, Perlan, which um, has got storage towers for hot water for the city of Reykjavik below, and on top, the most fabulous restaurant, revolving 360 degrees with a view right up towards the Arctic. Sweet. The scenery of Iceland is often called otherworldly, but paying just £60 a month for electricity, hot water and heating in winter in the Arctic is pretty otherworldly too. Of course, geothermal energy is abundant because of Iceland's volcanoes, but it didn't harness itself. Yet 400,000 Icelanders managed to raise the money amongst themselves without selling chunks off to multinationals. The whole geothermal effort is state and council owned, and that's why it's so cheap. Public ownership of energy, that's the big Icelandic lesson.